All right. We're live. All Night right. drive, bro. This better look like some um, some movie shit right here. <laughs> That's actually crazy. Tell the people what we're doing right now. We're doing a car podcast. <laughs> I... Car cast. Call it a car cast. Yeah. Well, a podcast in the car. It's not about cars. It's about yeah, jumping well, high. <laughs> yeah, true. We need a topic, um, by the way. But I got this idea from this YouTuber I saw, and then I was like, John, we should try this. This looks crazy. Does it look insane? Yeah. Isaiah was like, are we going to like be able to do this? I was like, yeah, I think it'll be all right. We're, we're actually driving around right now. <laughs> Yo, this is nuts. <laughs> Hold up. I need, to, I need to take a picture of this. <laughs> I think we leave this light on. It's like good lighting. Did he have lighting on in it? Yeah. Okay. Like this light? Oh, fuck. Oh, pff, well, I'll turn your flash on, Chief. <laughs> freaking flash bang, everybody. All right. Um... What are we talking about today? I don't know. I mean, I thought what would be a good one that we did in 2000 and, oh boy, this is the real test when another car arrives at the scene. A rare car shows up. Um, well, we can, I mean, we can do whatever. Uh, I thought a cool one would be like, remember when we did the one, it was like so impromptu and I just set up my camera on my leg. Yeah. It was like, what, 10 things? 10 tips to jump higher. T- top 10 tips to top jump 10 higher. Chimp, I, top 10 chimp. Top 10 tips to jump higher there we go we can remake that one i like that let's, let's do, do that. yeah let's come all up right, with 10 what are 10 your, things what's your what's your first one we'll go back and forth all right uh jump frequently at least once a week never go more than a week without jumping okay i like that um more than one at least once a week yeah what if you're hurt he drops he drops <laughs> instead of jumping yeah all right, i like that all right second one i would say or switch your plan Switch your plan. Oh, yeah, that's a good one, too. Yeah. So, wait, wait, is it to jump higher or to dunk well? Uh, to both. Both? All right. Yeah. I yeah. would say... The title of the video will be Top 10 Tips to Jump Higher. Okay, okay. So we got one. Jump higher. Uh, one a minute. We have 10 minutes. One a minute, bro. Oh, shit, you're right. We're going to go on the main road. This is going to be scary. I could lose a camera worth $5,000 here. Yeah. That's the worst thing that could happen. But I don't think that's going to happen. I'm confident. Um, the second, I would say, is get really good at throwing lobs. Like, I think the number one thing that determines if I'm going to dunk well is are my lobs on point. If my lobs suck off the, like, max effort jumps, I'm going to yeah. dunk well. I'm going to dunk poorly, and I'm going to jump low. Yeah. Those are the things, I think, for me personally. That's the second I have. Go ahead. Uh... Get stronger. That was so and compound. basic. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. I'll go more. I'll go That's more fine. in depth. That's get fine. get obsessed. Get obsessed with the weight room. Be obsessed with the weight room. Yeah. Be just as obsessed with the weight room as you are with jumping higher, but don't neglect either one. So a lot of people will fall in love with weight room and then stop jumping, or they'll fall in love with dunk sessions and then not prioritize the weight room at all. Let's see what it looks like with the layoff, by the way. Oh, that's kind of even more. Oh badass. yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty dope, that's, actually. That's sick. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, fall fall in love with with the weight room and get obsessed. Okay, I like that. Uh, that kind of that's encompasses three. the next one. But does that include like perfect your weight room technique? Mmm. Kind of. I think I think like we'll say four is perfect every technical aspect. Of everything. Of, of everything in the weight room. Everything, actually. Yeah. Perfect technique of everything, from the general work to the, from the general work to the specific stuff, whether it's plyos, whether it's your jump technique, whether it's olies, whatever it is, perfect it. Like, yeah. related to training. Per- perfect every aspect related to training. If, Become a student of the game. Yeah, you have to have, per- like, whether it's a lunge in a general circuit or a bicep curl, perfect it, and you will see it will pay dividends down the road yeah that's four yep that's right, four what's your next one number five is learn your body when it comes to injuries so that means always ask yourself is what i'm doing today gonna make me feel better or worse when i wake up in the morning tomorrow and the better you can get at predicting that the longer you're going to be able to make progress for the healthier you're going to be in the long term and you're gonna be able to dunk for a long freaking time if you can just answer that question accurately. Okay, so know your body, basically don't push through injury type of type of vibe. Yeah. Okay, in terms of nutrition, let's see. Let's say I would say <laughs> never do a bulk. <laughs> like, yeah. You try to stay as lean as you possibly can. 
And I think if you're gonna gain muscle, do it very, very, very slowly. Almost like naturally. Let your body naturally gain weight instead of like, oh God. Instead of forcing it. <laughs> that was a good that test. Was, that, was, that was real scary. I made, a, I made a U-turn with this camera attached to the car. I'm like, I'm going like 30, what am I going right now? I'm going 30 yeah, miles an hour yeah. and I'm good. That's, yeah. that's good. This, this suction cup thing works. Um, so yeah, don't like force weight on. I think I've seen that mistake happen a lot. Guys will like get fat basically because they're like, oh, I want to bulk and gain a bunch of muscle. Yeah. Like most of your strength gains should be neural, not necessarily just like getting heavier and, and like fatter so that you can lift more weight. That's a bad idea. Yeah. Was, All that, right. was that six? That was number six. So we got two each more? Yep. Okay. Uh, Let's see here. Is this where we put the THP plug about coaching? Oh. <laughs> It can be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Go to thbstrength.com if you want to get coached by uh, me and John Evans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But on that point, maybe Actually, like, actually, something related to that. I was going to say. Is get coached by somebody. Yeah. Even coaches need coaches. That's something we have preached since the beginning. I help John work through his training. He helps me work me through my training, right? We give each other tips. Austin to, like today, like John asked me us. about his hamstring tendinopathy, and he wanted a second viewpoint on it. Um, same, Austin is also a, a, a good point. That is something I think a lot of people become too prideful about and vertical listen. jump training. I think and that's the other thing. Like, find someone you trust, yeah, and listen to them, yeah. Because like, I could have jumped today. I mean, maybe I could, but like, we talked about it. and It was like, oh, maybe you can, maybe you can't. Yeah. But you probably shouldn't because the courts are going to be packed. Like, all these different reasons. And I was like, it's a great point. Yeah. Like, I, I shouldn't I shouldn't dunk for all those reasons. And I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I'm, tomorrow I will. Yeah. Coaching coaching is something I am always going to use. Like, it's something technically I don't need. I have the knowledge to train myself. But right. it's such a big, like, it, it clears up so much mental space and stress of it. And it, it's huge. Even for, like, my upper body training, for example. I can program my own own upper body training but i have john's friend programming upper body for me because i like not thinking about it i like just waking <laughs> up looking at my workout boom and then and it's also like i i find th there's something called the solomon paradox i think it's king solomon oh Solomon. he uh he would give advice to hella people people would travel hundreds of miles to ask him like life advice money advice everything but he was notorious for having a horrible personal life. Yeah. It's like he couldn't take his own advice, and it's just a lesson. And you can always give advice better than you can take advice. So, yeah, get a coach. I like that. That's, that's, that's good advice. That's good advice from someone to take advice from. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's taking his own advice. Okay, I think the next one is related to that one, and that is to periodize your training. I think following training principles, not ignoring training principles, the key training principles. That is big. So like, make sure you have specificity, make sure you have progressive overload, make sure you have elements of individuality. And I'm not talking you need a whole different freaking program, I'm talking like if you're hurt, you don't jump through it. And that's part of the coaching. Um, you know, pay attention to rest and recovery timelines. Like, the better, you can apply those training principles, the better you're gonna get as an athlete, yep. I think, personally. 100%. I think that was one of the missing links in my training. So like, I knew how to train hard before I met you, but applying it in the correct way is a freaking game changer. That's yeah, game changer. it's like bodybuilding is so simplistic in my opinion in comparison. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of people get in the weight room and they think like, oh, I'm just going to do what bodybuilders do. I'm just yeah. going to go lift a failure, basically. Like, do a bunch of lifts, get those muscles stronger by, like, lifting a failure. Mm -hmm. But, like, if you can apply some of the stuff that we've been doing, where you're doing... Like, Isaiah's trained with me for how many years to get to a point where you could do the isometric, the eccentrics we did the other day. Like, yeah. we've done that zero times for the back squat. I don't think we've done back squat like that ever. 600 no. pound negative? No. no, no we've no. done front no, squat, no. squats the hard way. We've never done it on back squat. It took... How many years before I actually I did it 2022. Oh, you did? Yeah. How late? How heavy? It was not nowhere near that heavy. Like it might have been 495, 455 even. What? I don't think I for back squat. Yeah, I maybe lowered 500. Maybe. Did you try? I think so. I actually want to look back at that. It'll be cool to see. That's crazy. That's crazy. I'm actually after this video, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look at it. Eccentric strength. I made a YouTube. I made a YouTube video about it. It was like 14 months ago. 
No. Uh, during the, in 29? Yeah, yeah, in 29. It was right before I, yeah, that was like 14, 15 months ago. She walks with weights doing curls every day, bro. Bro, she was walking in the center of the street. I didn't even see her. She's wearing white. I still didn't see her. Uh, uh, I ninth, definitely need to look back at that. Ninth tip, stay consistent. Don't stop. Yeah, that's huge. Don't ever stop. If you get much, hurt, don't stop. How much vertical? Like, we talked about this the other day. I've gained... I looked back at videos today. I was probably on a 10-foot rim. My head was, like, middle of the net on my best day in 2016. One of the best days ever at 2016, yeah. right? No angle. Well, even, even oh, I just hit that toad. Poor toad. Uh, so, murderer. I know. Um, but yeah, like angles included, like everything else. Take that out. My head was probably mid net. My best days ever. Now, my head has been close to the rim, filmed at eye level. Before it was like my brother sitting on the ground. Um, so my vertical has gone up since that time. I like, I think roughly between four and six inches. Yeah. And I had already had an extensive, extensive training background like history you know what i mean and had i stopped bro like i never would have cuff windmilled i never would have gotten close to east bay mm -hmm. i mean i've east bay on nine nine or nine eight and a half um you know like i never would have hit a windmill off the dribble it's just crazy how been much e and it would have been easy to stop yeah i could have been like well there was a time uh right before you started coaching me i was considering quitting dunking because of the knee pain and i was at a 42 inch vert <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. And I was seriously considering quitting dunking. There's been times, like, even in the last two years. I, mean, I think I've mentioned it to you. I'm like, yo, like, so, <laughs> I'm going to be time to hang the time. shoes up. Because it's freaking hard, but yeah. I did it. And it's insane, like, even tearing my IT band. Yeah, that was bad. Last February. That worst injury I've ever gone through. Easily could have stopped. Easily. And I've achieved so much in dunking that... People would have understood. Like, yeah, it would like, be okay. I could have retired, been been a coach, but then I'm thinking, like, dang, like these last the last sessions I've been having this last month. Like, I, I think I'm probably gonna PR my vert. Uh, it feels like you're not soon. even like tapping into what. Yeah, there's so much more of the training we're doing. Like, yeah. how much stronger I've gotten the PRs, and it's just like, damn, that I, I could easily stop and never even, not even touch that stimulus. Like at your darkest, worst moment in terms of injuries. You could you could be three four months away from your best ever. <laughs> yeah, that's actually crazy. When you yeah, think about it, like think about your meniscus when you were like thought you were done though. Mm -hmm. You're just like, oh, it's done. I tore it. Never coming back. Yeah. Or it's ripped. I'm surgery. F this. Yeah. I have to take off six months. A week later, he's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so yeah, just don't stop. Keep like. going. I learned that from Eric Broadbent because he had a full five year career in collegiate track and field with a great coach. Right. Was scoring. 60, did the decathlon, right? Was scoring 6,600 points. Not that good. Maybe 7,000, actually. I lied. Leaves. No, I don't even know. It might have been less than that. Leaves was already running super fast, like 10.5 speeds. So you freak athlete, you'd think. Goes and trains with Mike Young, ends up scoring almost 8,000 points, right? And it took three, four years to get to that point. And it's like, to me, that's like a sign of true, true progress. You know what I mean? Where it's like, you think you're done, and then you're really not. You're not even close. Yeah. You know? and, and like, I'm 30, and I'm still getting a little bit better a little bit better a little bit better it reminds me of this picture that i saw and it's like this guy and he's digging and then he stops digging but there's like a it's like a side angle like x-ray view of where he's digging and it was like an inch away from a diamond right and then he quit but if he had just gone for like five more minutes he probably would have got it he would have got to the diamond <laughs> Or that, that's really similar to that. Yeah. You never know when you're, when you're that really close to the diamond. All right, last one. We got one more point. What have we not said that's worth talking about? Ten tips to jump higher. Ten tips to jump higher. Can be anything. Man. Uh, anything, anything, anything. Plyos. Uh, it's actually about plyos. If you can do plyos, you probably aren't dunking enough. Like, dead ass, if you can handle doing plyos, you aren't dunking enough. That's my tip. Because plyos take away from what you could be using jump volume on. So when, dunking. so what are plyos for? When, when would you implement plyos? I would only use them when you don't want to be dunking. <laughs> like when you're okay not dunking for a period of time. That's so you, when it's okay so to do you're plyos. Talking, you're talking stretch shortening cycle February? I'm saying stretch shortening cycle February is when you're okay. Like, yeah, you just don't care about dunking. Like, so yeah, you, you say it's good dunk, for like variety? It's like, I mean, I think it's like, yes, yeah. You need it for to break up a monotony. You can use it for progressive overload. But, like, you need to be spending, let's just say you do that two months of the year, tops four, tops four months. Was that 30% of the year? Yeah. That's a lot, bro. I don't even know if I would, 
think about it four months of the year, I was like, bro, we're gonna do plyos. Yeah, like screw you're that. not gonna do screw you're not that. no way. You could probably still dunk, but those sessions have to be so short that I yeah. think it would just be like not a I mean there would I guess there'd be like a point, but it's like if you can if you can jump at a hundred percent, you know, or I'm trying to think of how to word this. Like if you can do plyos, you're probably not having sessions long enough. You're not having them frequently enough to the point where like you've ran into some sort of injury because you've been pushing up the spec the volume of specific work to the point where you would get hurt. And like you need to do that if you want to be good at dunking or jumping high at all off any plant, I think, personally. Yeah. Like who has gotten to an elite dunking level without dunking that frequently? No one. Literally nobody. Yeah, you have to freaking dunk a lot. And guess how many of those guys do plyos? Like, none of them. All the guys that do plyos suck at dunking. They might have crazy verticals, but they're not very good dunking. Think. Yeah, not a lot of people do plyos. Yeah, no one. Like, I'm talking a planned progression of plyos. I think Kilgannon a little bit. Kilgannon just does one plyo, and that's depth jumps. That's it. And yeah. he does it probably in a five-month progression. He does it for, like, a month. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe like a total of six sessions. Yeah, that's Jay it. Clark's another one that's done for track. He's done bounding and that type of thing. But he wasn't elite dunking. Yeah. And and if he was doing a lot of plyos, Jay Clark's also a cyborg. But if he was doing <laughs> a lot of plyos, he wasn't dunking a lot. Yeah. Because you can't. Let's There's see. No, 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 none of the TFB guys have done Anthony Height. Nope. T Curry. Nope. Me. Nope. Lee Peck. Nope. You said Height. Anthony Height. No. Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of a single dunker that's... Even one-footers, like... Tony Crosby, has he done plyos? Tony doesn't really do plyos, bro. He just dunks. <laughs> if he does plyos, he gets hurt. So there's no point. I'd rather have him dunk than do plyos. There Why would go. I want to waste my valuable, specific reps of jumping on plyos when I could be dunking? You know that was my reasoning for never doing plyos in the past? Really? I was always like, why am I going to do this shit when I can just dunk? That was literally my reason. Yeah, like that, that sentence point. you just said is the reason I never did plyos. I I did I tried plyos one time, got Achilles tendinopathy. Couldn't dunk. I couldn't. Yeah, I was just like, eh. And then after that, I there's t there was times where I could have, but I was just like, there's no point. Like, yeah, I might as well, I, I'm gonna dunk during this time because <laughs> I saw it as it wasn't even. I saw it. It'll it'll just waste bounce. It's bounce that I can use hitting dunks what's crazy is there's like kind of truth to that like if you waste your performance your readiness on plyos you're losing readiness you're just yeah. fatiguing yourself for the thing you actually yeah. want to get better at and half the time um because i've posted lots of videos on plyos and stuff like that i'm gonna break the news to you guys that is literally just to get eyes on the stuff because people love that shit. <laughs> they love plyos. They love bro. that shit, and I'm, and we know how to implement them correctly. But the thing is, is I just get that to get the eyes, and then you watch this stuff, and that's where you get. This is where these are the videos where you get the real sauce on how to jump. Yeah, plyos. actually, um, someone said this the other day. They're like, "There's so many gems in this old podcast," and I'm like, "You are correct. Yeah, there are so many gems." Anyways, yeah. that's the ten things. THPstrength.com. Let's make a shirt called I Don't Do Plyos. I Don't Do Plyos. <laughs> <laughs> there was one I thought of the other day that I thought I'm on. A, I wanted to put like. Clint's working on the. Like, I have Clint working on a shirt that says I'm. Or it's just, just a, a dunker. dunker. It says yeah. just a dunker. It's beautiful. But yeah, yeah THPstrength.com. 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 Go to THPstrength.com. If you want to jump higher. Is that our marketing tactic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. All right. <laughs> I'm so excited to see how this looks. I think it's going to look sick. What's crazy is, bro, this hey, thing scared the living shit out of me on some of those turns, bro. Yeah. I was like, I was like oh.